Hi there everybody and welcome to my top 10 list for flies for 2022. If you find the video useful, please leave a like, share it with your friends and subscribe. At number 10 is the Slump Buster. It's my go-to streamer. In the picture and in the video, you see it tied in white, but I do tie it in olive and black as well. I find this is a great fly because it's very versatile. I can present it in a number of different ways. I can strip it, I can twitch it, I can even dead drift it and put a dropper underneath. In the number 9 position is the Stoutly Emerger. This is a hyper-realistic fly that gets even the pickiest fish to come up for it. Its only real drawback is flotation. You need a nice still pool like this one in order for it to work, so I've made some modifications to make it better. If you'd like to tie this one yourself, check up at the top of the screen for a link to my tying video. Number 8 on my list is the Quillimoto, which is my version of a humpy tied with foam. I like to use this fly if I've got mayflies flying around, but I want to fish a deep, heavy dropper as well. This fly provides a lot of flotation and can hold up even size 14, sometimes even size 12 droppers. For a tying video on this, see the link at the top of the screen. In the number 7 spot is a fly that's new to my box this year, the Foam Stone Fly. I needed a replacement for the stimulator, which was just not performing like I would like. Foam Stone Fly looks a little more realistic, and it floats like a cork, even suspending size 8, size 6 stone fly nymph. I also use a slight modification of this pattern as my grasshopper pattern. Tie it in green, put it on a slightly longer hook, rearrange the legs so they're further back, and I've got a grasshopper. This was a very popular fly on a lot of my guided trips this year as it was easy to see and the takes were always very aggressive. In the number six position are the midges. I tie them in a number of different ways. Classic on the left, the martini midge in the middle and the kind of flash gordon on the right. Um, they find that they work best during the shoulder seasons. You know, October is an especially good month for them, but they're good at any point as a dropper. If you'd like to see a tying video for these, check out the link at the top of the screen. Speaking of shoulder season, this is a picture of a flat tire I got in a thunder flurry on the way to a guided trip. And in the number 5 position is my quill body dry fly. It's great when there's a hatch of blue wing olives. It's a fairly simple fly. I think it was more successful this year simply because I did a lot more dry fly fishing and a lot less nymphing, especially with uh, a lot of my clients. So it just it got a little more uh, time on the water this year and performed well as it usually does. For the tying video for this fly, see the link in my description. And in the number four position is the Miracle Caddis. It's another fly that benefited from me fishing a lot more dry flies this year. It's a great fly if the water's a little bit rough or you're needing to suspend a, a bigger dropper. I suspend up to a size 12 bead head dropper. It's got lots of foam, it's got some hackle to sit on, it floats really well, and it's just a really effective fly. Coming in a variety of colors to kind of match what caddis are happen to be hatching. For a video on how to tie this fly, please check out the link in my description. And for the first time since I started tying this fly, the dog's breakfast nymph is not in the number one position, but has fallen to the bronze medal position. Again, I think this fly this year was just a victim of me fishing a lot more dries, especially with clients. So it, it uh, didn't fare quite as well. It's still a great fly. It's an awesome dropper tied in bead head or in classic form. Um, it's great for whitefish, it catches bull trout, it catches cutthroats. It's just one of the, it's, it's the confidence fly, it's the go-to fly. This year it just didn't do as well as the other two. Check out the link at the top of the screen for a tying video. And in the silver medal position, the midlife lysis never fails stonefly nymph. I think this year was just a great year for stoneflies. Every time I went fishing, I saw husks on the walls everywhere. They just seemed to do really well and there seemed to be a lot of them. Fish were really into them this year. So this fly did really well. Not only did it do really well with whitefish, cutthroats, and rainbows, 
but on a particular trip, it caught this absolute beast of a bull trout for my client. For the tying video on this fly, see the link above. And in the gold medal position is the Portly Emerger. It's a variation of my Stoutly Emerger that's gone through a lot of R&D and a lot of variation and experimentation, but it just adds a little extra foam under the hackle collar to give a little extra flotation. It's great in positions like you see here in the video where you've got some white water coming in to you know, an obvious riffle and it's, uh, it's just great for those conditions and it picks off hungry cuts, rainbows. It's just a, been a great all around fly this year. As this fly is still kind of under development, I don't have a tying video for it yet, but one will be coming soon. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you, uh, if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you're interested in a guided trip with me, please get in touch with me by emailing midlifeflices at gmail.com. Be great to hear from you and plan something for this summer. Thanks a lot. Tight lines.